Yesterday, I was coaching a group of facilitators. They were all consultants. And I was coaching them on how to raise their day rates. So how to make more money per day. And I started to notice a pattern while I was coaching these people. And I've noticed this pattern before, but I never put words to it. And it's also something that I've never heard anyone talk about before. So I think it's maybe kind of something that most of you won't know about. So I noticed a pattern in the people who had low day rates versus the people who had high day rates. Now there's a lot of things that lead to that, but there's just one thing that I think is super important. And that is that the people with high day rates tend to invest more in themselves. They tend to invest a higher percentage of the money they're earning in educating themselves versus the people who are not making much money. Now I know you might say, yes, but the people who have more money will spend more money on themselves. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying even when these people who are having the high day rates today, even when they were starting out, they were still spending more on themselves than the people who are stuck in the low day rates. And I realized that reflected back on me when I was 20, when I was basically making no money, when I was working in a bar, when I was working in restaurants. I remember the first like thing that I bought when I made my first paycheck was an online course on copywriting. And that like took all of my money for the month that I could have been spending on drinking, having fun or whatever. And I didn't even think about it. I was just like, yeah, I wanna learn this thing that will help me make more money. And that was just the end of it. I wasn't, I wasn't overthinking it. And I realized talking to the people, we were in this group coaching call. Maybe you can show like a, what that looks like. It's like a Zoom call and I'm coaching these people. And I started asking people like, the people who had the high day rates, how much do you spend on yourself per year when you weren't making much money? Like how much, did you buy any courses? Did you buy any books? Did you go to any conferences? Did you, did you have a coach? Did you have a mentor? All of this kind of stuff. And by the way, there's actually a different point coming up. It's not just the point that they spend more money. Because they spend more money on themselves, they also are willing to ask more money from their clients without feeling weird. So, you know, when one of them spends 5,000 on coaching for, or like on, on personal development coaching, they don't feel as bad asking 5,000 for their day rate to a client to do something else. Buying things for yourself and investing in yourself and, and, and spending money on services and coaching services for yourself actually sort of remove some of the barriers that you might have asking clients. Now let's look at the people who are with low day rates. And, and, and the thing is, these are people who've actually, they're at the same point in their career. This person's been working in the industry for 10 years. This person's been working in the industry for 10 years. Maybe their skills are somewhat comparable, but this person's making less than this person, even though they also live in the same country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now this person, and I, when I ask them questions, they're a lot more, cheap with them with investing in themselves and they're the they're the type of person who will look at a course and it's like five hundred dollars and they're like that's not worth five hundred dollars i can do that research myself online so they would rather spend like three or four weeks doing all the research themselves than spending the four hundred dollars and just getting all the information or they would rather like if there's a coach uh, and the coach costs $500 an hour or something ridiculous, which by the way, good coaches cost even more than that. They will look at that and say, no, like I'm not spending that. Like that's a ridiculous amount per hour. I would rather like read all these books and, and figure this stuff out for myself. The problem is that they're not taking shortcuts. That one coach for one hour could maybe bring them two years ahead of where they are today by just spending that 500. Instead, they actually use all their time and have to go through all this trial and error. But the main problem is because they're so stingy with themselves, they are also scared to ask clients for a higher rate. They're not used to thinking about the value of money and how, how much it is actually valuable for clients just to spend money to get ahead and to get somewhere quicker. And so that was one of the things I noticed, this mindset, the people who spend a lot on themselves, in terms of education, in terms of coaching, they have a lot of an easier time asking clients for money. I'll give you a good example for me. So I was kind of stuck at a 15K day rate for a while. And then I got this public speaking coach to help me. He's actually coming next week. But his day rate is 35,000 euro per day to train me in public speaking. And the, the second I saw that, I was like, hell. I want to now start charging 35K per day. And it immediately changed my mindset. Really, it immediately changed my thoughts on where the ceiling is for how much I want to ask clients to book me. And literally, like, 
I, I, my next workshop that I'm doing is going to be 35K. So really, that's one thing to think about your, when you're thinking about how you invest in yourself. The real key here is if you're not willing to invest in yourself, you'll attract those types of people to you as well. You're going to attract clients that don't really want to invest in the things that you do. And if you're also the type of person who really nitpicks and price and you're always like looking to make sure you get all the value out and if you don't get exactly what you want, then you want to refund or you're going to write a bad review, you're going to also attract those exact types of clients to you because you waste too much time on that kind of thing. I've been to conferences where maybe over the four days or I've been to re retreats or I've, or I've had coaches where maybe out of all of the hours that I've had with them or at the conference, maybe only one minute of it was valuable. And to me, that's OK, I've got all the value I need. And that's what these high day rate people, that's how they think. How can I extract the value out of this and move on? Whereas the low day rate people tend to be the type of person who's like, OK, well, I've been talking to this person for an hour. But like the last 10 minutes, I don't feel like I got the value. I want that last 10 minutes of money back. And you're going to attract exactly that type of client to you. So with this video, what I'm trying to tell you, and there's really no, I have no goal for making this video. I don't care if you buy our courses. I don't care if you book our services. That doesn't matter to me. My goal is to help you understand that one of the things that might be holding you back from getting a higher day rate, and one of the things that might hold you back from even asking for a higher day rate is that you also are the type of person who doesn't spend on yourself. So even if you're just starting out, even if you're a beginner, think about what things can I be doing or what things am I not doing because I'm being a little bit cheap about my own education and what things could I be doing that sort of could break that barrier to me asking other people for that day rate for myself. That's the whole video. I have no idea if it makes sense, but if the point gets across, great. If not, I love you anyway. Bye everyone.